Well, hello there. It is Linda Stacy of Living Blueprints, and I hope people are well today. I'm going to be talking about complaining and victim mentality today and um, shedding some light around a couple of words that can help to flip things around in terms of providing an antidote to the complaining victim mentality. Um, Again, if you're watching this on YouTube or even in Facebook and you find the content valuable, uh, I'd appreciate if you liked it. And then, of course, subscribe on YouTube. That would be awesome. Um, so today's little phrase also comes from Brene Brown, who I talked about two days ago when I was talking about... Um, ooh, am I forgetting what I was talking about on Tuesday? It'll come back to me. Um, this one also from Brene. And I have to say a couple of things about complaining. I think that there's room for all emotion, you know, and that sometimes in this world, especially in the United States, we're led to believe that we have to be positive all the time or that, you know, people don't have any space for negativity or that if you're not smiling, that's going to put something on someone else. And I believe we're much more complex and that there's, again, a lot of emotion and that we need to be able to feel our emotions. Um, of course, that doesn't mean that we come in and share them in the wrong places. You know, there's a lot of complexity around this. Another disclaimer is that I am not a psychotherapist and some of what I'm talking about today gets into things that I am not an expert in terms of speaking on. This is just a tool that you can use in the workplace or with your relationship maybe on a very light level or with yourself if you want to, if you find yourself kind of in this negative pattern of thinking, which so many of us can do under the surface, um, whether or not we're even aware of it, sometimes it can be unconscious. So. I have to say that when I do talks and I pull people um, and I ask them about you know, where they think they are on a certain um, poll in terms of the way that they're getting things done and the way that they're living life according to the way they want to and the way that things happen in their organization, um, they often rate themselves um, higher than they rate other people. So often we're focused more on other people in terms of their faults, <laughs> which is Kind of, uh, you know, it's a human thing, but it's just an interesting observation because this tool can be used on you as a person. It can also um, be used if you're like in a situation with a coworker or with a direct report and they're really like, can't say, they're just in this spiral and they can't get out of it. I have a couple of examples. Um, I think that people complain because they feel a lack of control. Um, maybe they don't understand certain things. There's a certain lack of clarity. I did a session a couple of months ago where people were talking about just feeling like there were too many directions within their workspace. Um, they felt defeated. They felt overwhelmed. They felt in the dark. Um, there's a lot of disorganization. Um, and that, you know, as a result, work really was lacking meaning and purpose. So these are some of the other things that are legit that people, you know, end up putting people in kind of a negative. So basically, the way that you can stop this is, is try to get people to express what they want. And here are the rules around this. You can't just express what you want as the opposite statement of what is not happening. So you can't say, um, I don't want to be in the dark or um, I don't want to be disorganized or I don't want to feel defeated um, or I don't want my boss to, um, I, well, here's another one. I want my boss to stop letting X department control our department. Like I want, I want, you know, I want that to stop. You, you, the rule is you have to put that in some kind of positive expression. So an example would be, I want to have more autonomy and strategic direction from inside my department instead of just saying, I want my boss to. Anything that has to do with the behavior of another person is probably gonna land you in a position where you're not gonna succeed because as we all know, it's very difficult. It's impossible to you know, control other people's behavior um, unless you're like, we're not talking about psychopaths today and, and these types of things. <laughs> but anyway, um, you know, another one could even be, you know, I want the pandemic to be over. Clearly, this is something we don't have control over. But again, putting this in some form of, you know, what, what is it that the pandemic is keeping you from doing? And, and how can you put that in the positive? You could say, you know, I want to be free to move and connect more easily. Um, I want, um, uh, I want, you know, healthcare workers to have a little bit of reprieve, something like that. Um, so any way that you can put those expressions in the positive, and then what will magically happen is solutions will begin to appear when you actually decide what you do want. It is amazing if you ask someone who's in a real negative pattern and it can continues to complain about the same thing over a long haul, try to get them to try to get them to say what they want. It will take a while. It, it will really take a lot of reworking and you know it takes people time. I think we're conditioned not to express things that we want, but that's a different topic. 
Um, anyway, if, if you're asking someone else to consider what they want, here's another part of the rules. You have to do it with kindness. Come from a place of love and compassion. Um, if you're coming from a, what do you even want, you know, that type of thing, it's probably not going to go that well. If you really want this person to get to a different place and you feel like you can have some help in that, that's awesome. Ultimately, you're not responsible. Even if you're the boss, you're not ultimately responsible for everything that's going on with that person. I do think that you're responsible for maybe clarifying where they feel like they don't, like they're in the dark. You know, ask them, why do you, why do you feel like you're in the dark? Let's get clear on this. I do think bosses have that kind of responsibility, but you certainly don't have the responsibility to, you know, to, to make them feel essentially, you know, positive and proud <laughs> of themselves. You know, there, again, I said at the beginning, I'm not a psychotherapist, but, and psychologically, this can get very complex and deep. And sometimes people are complaining because there's a cry for attention. There's some unmet need that they are not able to solve themselves. I mean, I, I said in a couple videos ago, all of this is discovery and exploration for me. I certainly haven't figured all of this out, but I do know that when I express things in terms of what I what I would like to see or like to happen in my life, um, it's much more, um, it's a much more positive experience than if I'm just complaining about what isn't happening. Um, and again, try to get people to express what they want. It is, it is a challenge sometimes. Um, what else do I want to say about this? Another example, I used this technique in a webinar I did a few months ago, and it was um, mostly women, and it was, you know, just a few weeks into the pandemic, and one of them, you know, we we're trying to do this exercise with in terms of, you know, what do you want, and um, she had a lot of things going on. She's got, you know, twins at home now. She had... Um, you know, issues in terms of them not both having the right equipment to do their schoolwork. There was just so much, you know, in terms of, you know, what do you want? And so we kept going with it. Eventually she said, if I could just have one hour and I'm like, okay, so we got some things on paper. If we could just have one hour. And I believe there was one other thing that I'm forgetting right now. Anyway, once we opened that up to the group and people started giving suggestions, um, about five or 10 minutes later, someone ended up saying, you know, if you, that, that her mother-in-law was helping with her kids and it was like a light bulb went off for this individual because she has a mother-in-law who isn't working or, or actually it may have been even her, her own mother, I think, um, who, who probably could spend one hour each day with, um, the kids in terms of doing their schoolwork. So again, once you can kind of identify the thing that you're looking for, um, you might actually see it, but if you have no idea you know, if you are aiming at nothing, you'll hit it every time. Dave Ramsey says that all the time. I'm not sure exactly where he got it, but it's so true. You got to be aiming for something to even get close. This is, you know, something about intention setting too, but it's just, it's just real life. It doesn't have to get too woo woo on this. Anyway, is there anything else I wanted to say about this? Again, Whenever you're in a negative spiral or someone else is in a negative, negative spiral, especially if it's something to complain about again and again and again, you do not have to continue to listen to them. And you can really just try to turn the conversation, if you really want to help them, if you really love them, um, into, you know, what do you want? Ultimately, what we all want is around freedom and love and satisfaction. And a lot of those things have to be cultivated from within and sometimes we have to remove ourselves from certain environments in order for that to happen um but but we have much more um responsibility or control than we think we do over whether or not we can feel freedom in the experience that we're having for ourselves so again this is uh everything that i'm doing is really around taking full ownership and responsibility for for you because that's really all you got and it's amazing though what begins to change in your environment as you begin to take more and more responsibility for the things that you're going for and just the way you want to be in the world i'm going to post my nine tips again um, in the comments of this if anyone wants to download that and of course they align with the book, which I have just a few more copies of at home, but it is available on Amazon if anyone is interested in that. Again, if you're watching it on YouTube, I would love it if you'd like and or subscribe. And I hope everyone has a really excellent um, rest of the week. Bye-bye.